Colorectal cancer accounts for the third most common cancer worldwide. At diagnosis, 15 to 25 percent of the patients have metastatic disease. 50 percent of the patients with early stage disease develop metastasis at some point or the other. The five year survival for metastatic colorectal cancer is less than 20 percent. Now, the metastasis in colorectal cancer has been subclassified as M1A, meaning metastasis to one site or organ without peritoneal involvement. M1B, in which there is involvement of two or more sites or organ without peritoneal metastasis. And M1C, in which there is peritoneal surface involvement with or without other organ or site involvement. Oligometastasis, the concept of it was given by Hellman with Selbum. Who coined the term? Uh, who coined the term? And they represent. And this basically represents an intermediate state between local and widespread disease. Now, to define it, it may refer to solitary or few detectable metastatic lesions, which may at times be even more than five. Usually confined to a single organ, but may be confined to two or three organs as well. But the primary thing is the local control of it might lead to improved outcome. The likelihood of the oligometastatic state should correlate with the biology of tumor progression. The most common sites of the oligometastatic colorectal cancers are liver, lung, peritoneum, nodes, and ovary. These may be synchronous or metachronous. Synchronous in which it is diagnosed at uh, the metastasis occurs at uh, uh, within six months of the diagnosis of primary tumor. And it is said to be metachronous when the oligometastasis is detected after six months of the diagnosis of primary tumor. Now, the involvement of lung and liver have better, have better prognosis and uh, less than 10% of the patients present with upfront resectable metastatic oligometastatic colorectal cancer. The management of it is, uh, is basically via a multidisciplinary approach. Now, the guidelines regarding the oligometastatic colorectal cancer were given by ESMO in the year 2016. And then in the year 2018, there was a combined consensus with the Japanese uh, group as well. Now, coming to the workup of the patients, the patient, the tumor tissue is to be subjected for KRAS, NRAS, BRAF mutation and HER2 amplification. Tumor MSI, MMR status, if not done, has to be done. The first imaging modality has to be CECT, thorax, abdomen, as well as pelvis. Additional stepwise imaging depends on the localization of the metastasis. Now, ultrasound may be helpful to characterize liver metastasis, but then MRI of the liver using hepatocyte specific contrast agents as gatoxate, disodium, and gadobinate deglumin are basically of importance in potentially receptible colorectal cancers. Whole body PET CT uh, is indicated if at all, uh, def it's definitely indicated if uh, we are looking at a potentially surgically curable M1 disease. Now, this was a study given in the year 2019, which served to see the diagnostic performance of gadoxetic acid enhanced liver MRI versus multi-detector CT for assessing the colorectal liver metastasis. And over here, it was seen that one that out of the total 512 metastasis, which were seen in 128 patients, MRI detected 489 lesions, while MDCT detected 384 lesions. The sensitivity per lesion for MRI was 90 to 96%, while with CT it was 72 to 75%. MRI was found to be a better modality in patients treated with chemotherapy, in subcapsular lesions, and in periviliary metastasis. Coming to the various treatment strategies, now to determine what a, what should be the plan ahead for managing the patient, it is important for us to have a multimodal treatment approach. It depends on tumor characteristics, patient related factors and treatment related factors. Now these are the various groups into which the patients have been, have been stratified. The group zero, which is the resectable, in which patients have a clearly resectable R0 liver and or lung disease. The treatment goal in such patients is cure. And hence the treatment intensity is either straightforward surgery or immediate, it, it, is, it is surgery, which may be immediate surgery without any prior chemotherapy, or it may be with 
uh, perioperative chemotherapy. The second group is group one, which is potentially resectable. Now, these patients have unresectable liver or lung limited disease, which might become resectable after some point of time. And the, hence the, the treatment goal in such cases is maximal tumor shrinkage, the treatment intensity being upfront most active combination therapy and has to be an intensive treatment approach. The third group, which is the group, uh, which is the not resectable group, but then this group is was having multiple metastasis, also was having tumor related factors and was not able to withstand uh, and was having an, enough ability to withstand the intensive therapy. The goal of treatment in such group is to clinically uh, reduce the tumor burden and to achieve disease control. For this, the treatment intensity, which was advocated was upfront active combination, minimum of a doublet chemotherapy. The, th the last group, which is the not resectable group, but then these patients were asymptomatic with multiple metastasis and were not in a position to undergo resection and were not suitable for intensive therapy and were frail. Now, the treatment goal in such patient was basically more of, uh, was more, was actually tailored according to patient preference and just to slow down disease progression, tolerability was the most relevant factor in this. The various treatment strategies include surgery, which uh, can be either in the form of liver resection, pulmonary metastatectomy. It can be systemic anti-cancer therapy, which is the chemotherapy, which may be used as neoadjuvant for conversion and adjuvant. And the third modality is the ablative treatment, which can be localized treatment as in stereotactic ablative uh, radiation, brachytherapy, radiofrequency ablation, microwave ablation, and cryoablation. The local regional treatments include radioembolization, chemoembolization using TACE, uh, which is TACE or beads, and th the last one being the local chemotherapy. Coming to the surgery, uh, the surgery, the plan of the surgery depends upon two factors. We have to look into the oncology criteria as well as the technical criteria. As we can see over here, the patients who fall into the category of an easily resectable cancer and also having a good prognostic factor can be taken up straight away for surgery and they do not require any preoperative therapy. But the patients which fall into a good or otherwise a doubtful prognostic factor, but otherwise are resectable, they have been advocated to undergo perioperative chemotherapy. And those patients which have a borderline resectable cancer, they are best subjected to best systemic therapy for conversion into a resectable cancer. Complete R0 resection is the goal of the surgery. It can be done both as upfront surgery or it can be even done following perioperative chemotherapy. Resection of liver and lung lesions can be undertaken. There are other cases in which uh, surgery can be of importance, like selected patients with low volume peritoneal disease with peritoneal carcinomatosis index less than 12 and without any evidence of any other systemic disease may also benefit with complete cytoreductive surgery and HIPEC. However, there is no definitive consensus in case of uh, for isolated distant lymph node metastasis. However, there is a paper which was which was uh, brought out by the Australian Registry in the year 2021, in which 3,408 metastatic colorectal cancer patients were was uh, were screened to find out 93 patients having isolated lymph nodal metastasis. Out of these patients, 24, pa 24 patients were taken up for curative intent therapy while the rest were taken up as the other cases with palliative and with other local regional therapies alone. Now, they found that better overall survival was, uh, was noted in the curative intent therapy group as compared to the palliative intent, the p-value was 0 0.01 and they even showed that similar overall survival was reported uh, with respect to isolated lung or liver metastasis which were treated with curative intent. Now, coming to colorectal liver metastasis, 25% of the patients with metastatic colorectal cancers have synchronous lesions in the liver, while 50 to 70% of the patients develop metastasis within a span of three years. Now, coming to the criteria for resectability, 10 to 20% of the patients are generally have resectable disease at presentation. Complete resection, the disease should be taken up for resection 
if complete resection is feasible while maintaining at least an FLR of 30% or a remnant liver to body weight ratio of more than 0.5. An R0 resection of the primary tumor should be possible without any evidence of extrahepatic disease. Now, as I mentioned prior, there are technical as well as oncological category, uh, categories which need to be taken into consideration. Among the contraindications, the absolute contraindication includes impossibility of R0 resection with, uh, without the presence of adequate FLR. Secondly, as I explained prior, unresectable extrahepatic disease. Relative contraindication being R0 resection is possible only with complex procedures and otherwise if an R0, if an R1 is possible. Coming to oncologic criteria, if there is concomitant extrahepatic disease, if there is number of if the number of lesion is five or more, or if there is tumor progression, all these features need to be taken into account for giving for going ahead before we go ahead to resectable for resection. Now coming to liver resection, minor hepatic resection includes resection of not more than two conoid segment removal, and these can be done simultaneously along with primary resection. Major hepatic resection is generally done as a, as a separate procedure to avoid increased morbidity and perioperative mortality rate. Now, there are two sorts of approaches. One is the classical approach in which we go ahead with the primary, then we go ahead with adjuvant chemotherapy, and then we have the liver resection or the secondary, secondary, uh, secondary resection. Now, the concept which is being advocated is the liver first approach in which we subject the patient to chemotherapy with or without targeted therapy, followed by treating the liver first and then giving the patient chemotherapy in the intermittent time, which is around four to six weeks, and then we treat the primary next. Now, there are various trials which have advocated the liver first concept. One of the trials being, uh, being done by near near of at all in the year 2019, they did a retrospective analysis on 129 patients of locally advanced colorectal cancer having synchronous colorectal liver mids. Now, these they subjected the patient to NACT two to three cycles, followed by liver first resection, followed by RT for the for the for the primary, followed by colorectal cancer resection. Among these 129 patients, 90 patients completed liver first approach. 10, 10 patients receive, uh, uh, had near complete primary tumor resolution and 36%, uh, 36 patients could not complete the liver first approach either due to disease progression or due to dropout. So among this, we can see that 40% of the patients didn't have to undergo the pelvic surgery, which otherwise could have been done prior and could have increased the morbidity as well. But then this, was, this doesn't conclude that uh, but this otherwise is not so conclusive. Other trial which was adopted, which was done by Yoliant et al. by, um, by the liver med survey, they did a retrospective analysis again in which 7,360 patients with colorectal cancer with synchronous liver meds were taken into consideration. They subdivided the patients into three groups, primary first group with 4,415 patients, liver first with 552 patients and simultaneous resection was done in 2,393 patients. Now, they compared the results in all the three groups and they found that liver first approach was a independent positive prognostic factor in case of, bilo in case of multiple bilobar metastasis. However, in case of solitary metastasis or multiple unilobar metastasis, the result of liver first or the, or the simultaneous resection was equivalent. Last study which I mentioned, uh, one more thing even which they mentioned was the asymptomatic, the patients who, uh, the patients uh, were either asymptomatic or uh, from the primary or symptomatic. For the, symptomat for the asymptomatic primary patients, they put up the patient first for new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by radiotherapy if the patient was having a middle or lower rectal tumor and then they posted the patient for a simultaneous or a delayed resection as per the group's division was done prior. The, if the patients were symptomatic, either for bleeding, they kept the patient for chemotherapy 
and later went ahead with the approaches as in the primary liver or the simultaneous resection. But if the patient was having perforation or obstruction, they went ahead with primary surgery followed by chemo and liver resection. Coming to another surgery for liver resection, which is the two-stage hepatectomy using portal vein embolization. This is indicated in bilobar colorectal liver metastasis in which FLR is inadequate, like uh, less than 20% in normal or up to less than 30% in disease liver. In this, we clear up the tumor from the anticipated FLR and do contralateral portal vein ligation and portal vein embolization. In a span of four weeks time, there is resultant atrophy of the diseased liver and hypertrophy of the healthy liver. And then hence, which increases the FLR and hence the patient can be taken up for the staged lobectomy procedure. Now, 65, there was a study which was conducted in the year 2011 by Brockett et al. in which they put up 65 patients um, in which 65 patients underwent the first stage hepatectomy and out of these only 72% completed the second stage hepatectomy. The five year survival, overall survival was found to be 51% and they quoted that and they quoted that non-completion of the stage procedure and major post-operative complications, if present, were associated with worse survival. And also they showed that absence of post portal vein embolization hypertrophy, which is less than 5% increase, if present, uh, predicts a post-resection liver failure. Now we have another uh, surgery, which is associating liver partition and portal vein ligation for staged hepatectomy, which is by the name of ALPS. It is a short-term two-stage hepatectomy, which induces unparalleled increase in FLR of just one segment and rescues uh, and risk and also helps in rescuing from portal vein embolization or portal vein ligation uh, failure. It is indicated in unilateral single or multiple lesions if uh, in close contact to the FLR or its pedicle and bilobar disease. In this, FLR clearance is done along with portal vein ligation as well as liver parenchyma division. Now, in a short span of 10 days, we take up the patient for lobectomy. This reduces the dropout risk and also reduces adhesion formation. But this procedure was found to have a morbidity as high as 36% and a mortality of 7.5%. Also, a study in the year 2015 quoted that post-hepatectomy liver failure after stage 1 or a MELD score, MELD score of more than 10 before stage 2 in case of uh, ALPS procedure, put the patient at a higher risk of 90-day odd mortality. Now, uh, we have a question always in our mind regarding simultaneous versus delayed resection for patients who have an upfront resectable synchronous lesion in liver. Now, a retrospective randomized controlled trial was conducted in the year 2021 in which total of 85 patients were taken and they were divided into 39 in simultaneous and 49 in the delayed group. But and the results, uh, the results which were found were major query operative complication rates were equivocal in both the groups, and the overall survival was better in the was better in the simultaneous group, but not the disease free survival. However, this was not that statistically significant. So coming to the margins for liver resection. As we know, R0 is always the goal in the surgery. R0 parenchymal margin, which is 1 mm, and R1 vascular margin, which was defined as less than 1 mm with tumor exposed along transaction plane, was found to show, uh, was found to have equivalent outcome as R0. This was, uh, this was by, uh, this was conducted, this was shown by Vigano L. et al. in the year 2016. And they also showed that the local recurrence after R1 vascular, uh, after R1 vascular, after three years was was not uh, was similar to the was similar to the R0 resection value. The new concept which has come in today nowadays is the parenchyma preserving surgery, in which we go ahead with limited hepatic resection by following complex multiplanar dissection trajectory, and in this we use intraoperative ultrasound. It helps to and we detach the tumor from major intravascular vessels and try to identify and preserve the communicating vessels so as to preserve maximum amount of liver tissue possible. And hence, in with the help of this approach, the number of the metastasis may not be a limitation. 
to carry out a metastatectomy. This was conduct, this was shown by a study in Torizi, by Torizi et al. in the year. Coming to the various prognostic scores for liver metastasis, one which we know very commonly from prior is Fong et al. in the year 1999, in which the factors included are maximum tumor, maximum hepatic tumor size more than 5 cm, a CEA value of more than 200 nanogram per ml, primary tumor lymph nodal positivity, a disease-free interval less than 12 months, and multifocal hepatic tumor. Each has, a, each has a score of 1 and the high risk patients were those having 4 to 5 points. The Another prognostic score which has come, which was proposed by John Hopkins group in the year 2018 is by the name of GAME score. It takes into account genetic as well as morphological evaluation. This includes presence of KRAS mutation, CEA more than 20 nanogram per ml, primary tumor lymph node positivity and tumor burden score which was actually calculated via a Pythagorean graph, the value being if 3 to 8 suggested uh, had a score of 1 and a value of 9 or more had a score of 2. The presence of extra hepatic disease was given a score of 2. If the score out of 6 was 4 to 6, it was categorized as a high risk. That means having a poor prognosis as compared to the low risk group. Now coming to the various other mortalities for liver metastasis. Next on line is the transarterial chemoembolization. It is based on the process of tumor angiogenesis and exploitation of vascular capacitance of the tumor to administer high concentrations of chemotherapy loaded on calibrated microparticles through a process of ionic binding. Now, chemotherapy delivery is based on plasma ion exchange as a function of time, and hence there is a sustained concentration of the, de of the chemotherapeutic agent which is delivered to the liver. Interventional radiologist via the femoral artery catheterization using Seldinger technique guides the catheter into hepatic artery, which is followed by injection of the chemotherapeutic agent before removing the catheter. Since the chemotherapy has been compartmentalized, there is lesser toxicity, increased concentration and potentially improved tumor response, which may even improve survival. Now, uh, a well-recognized complication of TACE is the post-embolization syndrome, which is an inflammatory complication characterized by fever, right upper abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting. This is seen in around 50% of the patients. This can be done by a lipoidal-based delivery using radio-opaque emulsion of poppy seed oil and water mixed with the chemotherapeutic agent. This is generally used in primary liver tumors. The thing which is of importance is the drug-eluting microspheres. These were introduced in the year 2006 and uh, they can load a variety of drugs via ion exchange or absorption and are infused directly into the tumor. The most common, um, the most studied drug being the enotican by the name of Deberry. The drug eluting microspheres have a lesser rate of post embolization. Martin et al. in the year 2015 conducted a randomized control trial in which 70 unresectable colorectal liver metastasis were taken. 10 of them were uh, a part of pilot study. Now, the rest patients were randomized equally into m Fox plus Bevacizumab and the other one being uh, supplemented with the addition of Deberry. The overall response rate was found to be greater in the Deberry arm at 2 months as well as 6 months. P-values were significant. Another study which was done by Quarantini et al. in the year 2012, it was also a randomized controlled trial in which 74 unresectable colorectal liver metastasis and those patients who had received two lines of prior therapy were included. And again, they were uh, they underwent one is to one randomization, but into one arm having folfury, which uh, had received six cycles, and the other arm having patients undergoing debris with two cycles. They also showed that statistically significant benefit was seen in terms of overall survival as well as progression-free survival. The next strategy which is, which is being used for the liver metastasis is transarterial radioembolization or selective internal radiotherapy by the name of SIRT. This employs glass or resin microspheres which are 20 to 35 micrometer in diameter and they release the beta emitter yttrium 90. Its half-life is 64 hours and this ensures a continuous low linear energy transmission to the liver metastasis and hence a patient has to be, uh, should, should uh, be told to take due precautions for one week time.
up to 80 million resin microspheres or 2 million glass microspheres can be injected into appropriate hepatic artery or one of its main branches, the dose of radiotherapy being 1 to 3 gigabacterium. Hepatic angiography is performed prior to this procedure and aberrant vessels from liver to other organs are embolized with coils and 99M technetium labeled macro, lab macro aggregated albumin is used as a surrogate of the treatment. Definitive procedure is done 2 to 3 weeks following this. This therapy is being used as a salvage therapy, can be used as a salvage therapy in treatment refractory disease or in second line settings with systemic therapy and a global combined analysis uh, was carried out in the year 2018, Foxfire, Surflox and uh, Foxfire and they showed that there was no effect of, uh, of TAR on overall survival and uh, and it was associated with increased frequency of grade 3 and 5 adverse effects. Hepatic arterial infusion of chemotherapy is another technique which is being used for liver metastasis in which we deliver the antineoplastic agents directly into the liver metastasis. Port catheters are implanted surgically or percutaneously near the hepatic artery root and this ensure the higher extraction ratios and local drug concentration determine its rational. The drugs used are oxaliplatin and fluoxuretin or 5-FU. It is considered in liver limited disease where surgery or ablation is not indicated as second line therapies or salvage therapies in unresectable colorectal cancer. Oxaliplatin, uh, the infusion of oxaliplatin via this route has similar toxicity as intravenous infusion and uh, increased uh, tumor response rate up to 80% was seen in patients treated with uh, hepatic arterial infusion using fluoxuridin along with systemic chemotherapy. Now coming to lung metastasis, 15% of the metastatic colorectal cancers present with lung metastasis. Only 10% of them have isolated lung metastasis without liver metastasis. Now the criteria for resection in case of lung metastasis is first of all radicality, meaning it is it should be technically feasible. Secondly, feasibility. The patient should, should be able to tolerate the resection and should have an adequate pulmonary reserve. The third being oncologic control in which Primary colorectal cancer should be controlled and there should be no extra thoracic disease except otherwise a resectable colorectal liver metastasis. Pulmonary metastatectomy when feasible has a 5 year overall survival of 25 to 35%. Now there is a, it can be done via both VATS as well as thoracotomy. There was, there was found to be no difference in overall survival or relapse free survival in between both the techniques. Parenchyma sparing approach is always recommended and hence a wedge resection or segmentectomy is preferred over lower resection. A study which was conducted, a multicenter randomized clinical trial by the name of Palmic was uh, done, was carried out in the year 2019 in which they tried to assess the difference, they tried to compare pulmonary metastatectomy versus continued active monitoring in colorectal cancer. This study was, however, stopped prematurely due to poor and worsening recruitment. The estimated five-year survival was uh, shown to be 38% for metastatectomy versus 29% for the active surveillance group. The prognostic factors in case of uh, lung metastatectomy include the worst these are the factors which show, which indicate a poor uh, overall survival, advanced stage of the primary, preoperative CEA value of more than 4 to 5 nanogram per ml, a disease-free interval of less than 12 months, lung metastasis size of more than 2 centimeter, presence of multiple metastasis, positive mediastinal lymph node, and if the distance between the lesion and the resection margin is less than 2 centimeter, we're all associated with poor overall survival. Now, coming to the other treatment modalities, which are actually applicable to all the, all the sites of metastasis possible in case of oligometastatic disease. Coming to systemic chemotherapy, it is the standard of care and should be considered initially in every strategy, except uh, otherwise if there are single or very few liver or lung lesions, which may be skipped from it initially. It may be given in the form of perioperative chemotherapy or in the form of adjuvant or in the form of a conversion chemotherapy. Coming first to perioperative chemotherapy, patients with technically resectable disease but unclear or unfavorable prognosis should receive perioperative chemotherapy. Folfox or Kepox regimen is recommended 
for a total duration of six months. A study by the name of Epoch trial was conducted in the year 2008 and they, they tried to compare perioperative Folfox 4 chemotherapy and surgery uh, with surgery alone group. 364 patients were randomized one is to one in both the groups and perioperative chemotherapy received six cycles of pre and six cycles of post, uh, six cycles of post, uh, six cycles of uh, Folfox uh, post surgery and uh, surgery alone group was obviously there. There was no difference in overall survival between the groups. However, a trend towards benefit in progression free survival was seen with perioperative chemotherapy and hence it was told that it is compatible with surgery and can reduce the risk of events. Targeted agents, however, should not be used in resectable patients. A study conducted in the year 2020 by the name of New Epoch trial was done in which 257 patients were taken up, 128 received chemotherapy alone and 129 patients received chemotherapy with cetuximab. The chemotherapy used here were uh, all the three lines of chemotherapy, that is Folfox, Kepox, and Folfiri were taken, and uh, the results were analyzed in all the three types of chemotherapies with cetuximab. And uh, patients were subjected to 12 weeks chemotherapy preoperatively, followed by surgery, followed by another 12 weeks of uh, chemotherapy. A decrease in median progression-free survival and overall survival was seen with the addition of cetuximab in all, with respect to all the chemotherapies and hence they concluded that cetuximab should not be used in the setting of operable disease. Coming to adjuvant therapy, there is no strong evidence for uh, supporting adjuvant therapy in favorable oncological and technical criteria. Uh, however, patients with unfavorable criteria may benefit from adjuvant therapy. A study done in the year 2018 by Pang Z et al. Uh, retrospectively analyzed 264 uh, resectable colorectal cancer patients with liver alone metastasis and the patients were categorized into 200 patients in the cervix surgery with adjuvant chemotherapy of which 102 received new adjuvant chemotherapy and 64 had a surgery alone group. They showed that uh, in, they showed that three year overall survival was higher in high risk patients that is having a Pong score of three to five. And uh, however, there was no adjuvant benefit of addition of adjuvant therapy on uh, relapse free survival as well as overall survival irrespective of the NACT being used or not. Coming to conversion chemotherapy, potentially resectable patients are uh, should be taken up for conversion chemotherapy and the regimen uh, should be given, which should lead to higher response rate and tumor reduction. Now, patients having RAS or BRAF wild type mutation were taken up for cytotoxic doublet with EGFR antibody, which is cetuximab or panitumumab. The RAS mutant variant were taken up for cytotoxic, doublet, cytotoxic doublet or folfoxiri along with bevacizumab. And re-evaluation was done every two months and the intention was that we shouldn't overtreat a borderline resectable disease. Maximum response was seen in 12 to be at 12 to 16 weeks interval. Now, these are the various trials which have been done, uh, which show about conversion chemotherapy and the various regimens used. Coming to thermal ablation, the treatment goal uh, is to eradicate all visible metastatic lesion combined with systemic chemotherapy with or without surgery. It was found to be associated with better overall survival and local control. If the lesion was small in size, was less in number. If it was separate from the intratumoral vasculature or bronchi by at least 3 mm. And if it was easily visible at imaging. Local tumor control depends on margin was, uh, show, was uh, advocated by a study in 2013 by Wang X et al. And the tumor control was 100% with a margin of more than 10 mm, while it was 73% with a margin of 6 to 10 mm. Uh, this was shown with respect to radiofrequency ablation and colorectal liver metastasis. Another study in the year 2016 showed that tumor size and subcapsular location better predicted local tumor, local tumor PFS as compared to ablation margins alone. This study also took into account radio frequency ablation to make this finding. Now, the various modalities to go ahead with thermal ablation include radio frequency ablation, microwave ablation, cryoablation, 
irreversible electrophoresis uh, and laser ablation. Radio frequency ablation, basically what happens is there is high frequency alternating current and there is heat generation and coagulative necrosis. It is effective for lesions less than 3 cm and is equivalent to small wedge resection in case of small size of lesion. The disadvantage being it is difficult to ablate a lesion more than 5 cm and it has got a heat sink effect and hence can and it can cause injury to the nearby organs. Coming to microwave ablation, here the microwaves are used to determine the heat generation and they ultimately bring about coagulative necrosis. The advantage is that it doesn't has a it doesn't have a heat sink effect and can ablate a larger zone and is preferred for lesions more than 3 cm. It is a bit faster as well, but the cons is that it is expensive and it can still cause injury to nearby organ. Coming to cryoablation in this, ice crystal, uh, the mechanism is ice crystal formation leading to cell death and tumor ischemia, the temperature reaching as low as minus 195 degree. And uh, the pros is that there can be, we can visualize the ice ball during the procedure. The cons is there can be a cyto there can be a cryo shock which can happen secondary to cytokine release and it is an expensive procedure. Coming to irreversible electrophoresis, in this electrical pulses are, de are delivered which bring about, uh, which result in pores in the cell membrane and ultimately in apoptosis of the cell. The advantage being no heat sink effect again, effective for lesions less than 5 cm. It is indicated for central and perihilar lesion and causes limited injury to nearby vessels and organs. The disadvantage being it is difficult to ablate larger lesions, requires placement of at least two applicators and general anesthesia OT equipment are all required. Laser ablation uses, uh, converts the absorbed light into heat. In this, uh, we, can precise, uh, we can precisely ablate an area and it is preferred for multiple small and variable size lesion. It, uh, it, it is expensive otherwise, otherwise it's a good modality. Radio frequency ablation are, uh, if at all, if we have centrally located lesion and perihilar metastasis, these are not, uh, if at all, these have to be ablated by radio frequency ablation. They do not have a very good result. Microwave ablation is has a more efficient heating and is preferred in tissues with high blood vascu high blood supply or vascular heat sinks. Laser. In laser, near infrared light from ND arc or diode laser is used and it is absorbed by the and it is later absorbed by the human tissue. Now, a study done in the year 2017 by uh, Elena Nadia et al. showed that uh, they basically have started recruiting this study. In this ideal colorectal liver metastasis amenable to percutaneous ablation was uh, found to be a solitary tumor with a largest diameter of up to 3 cm, which could be completely ablated with a sufficient margin. The 5-year survival, according to this study, was found to be up to 70% after ablation. Pathological confirmation of complete tumor necrosis with margin of over 5 mm was found to show better long-term, was found to have a better long-term tumor control. And small tumors, which could be completely ablated with clear margins, had an outcome which was similar to surgery. The York clock trial was uh, is a trial which was start which was proposed in the year 2017. It aimed to show long-term benefits of local tumor ablation in unresectable colorectal liver metastasis. In this, 119 patients with unresectable colorectal liver metastasis were taken, with uh, metastasis number being up to 10 and no extrahepatic disease. These patients received systemic therapy alone or systemic therapy along with aggressive local treatment by RFA with or without resection. The primary endpoint is 30 month overall survival, which was uh, found to be more than 38%. At median follow-up of 9.7 years, 65% patients in the combined modality arm and 89% in the systemic uh, therapy arm uh, expired. Statistically significant difference in overall survival was seen in the combined in the combined modality arm. The p value was found to be 0 0.01, and uh, they showed that aggress and hence they concluded that aggressive local treatment can prolong overall survival in patients with unresectable colorectal liver metastasis. This is an ongoing trial by the name of collision trial. It seeks to ask the question whether 
whether thermal ablation can replace surgery for some cases in colorectal liver metastasis. The patients which are eligible in this trial include patients having at least one resectable and ablatable lesion up to three centimeter within 10 centim within uh, the number being up to 10, having a good performance score with no evidence of extrahepatic disease and no prior liver treatment. Supplementary resection was allowed for resectable tumor less than 3 cm and ablation for unresectable tumor more than 3 cm was permitted and was not taken into consideration to assess uh, otherwise. The endpoints of the study were defined to be primarily as overall survival and secondarily to be disease-free survival, time to progression, technique uh, efficacy, mortality, length of hospital stay and quality of life assessment. The, the results of this study are expected by the year 2025. Coming to stereotactic ablative body radiotherapy, it ensures precise high dose delivery of radiotherapy to a target in single or small fractions within eight with very, with very steep fall off from the target, enabling a high biological equivalent dose. Its advantage includes a less normal tissue less toxicity to the normal tissue being non-invasive and it can be done as an outpatient procedure. It can be done, uh, it can be used to treat liver, lung, bone, lymph nodal as well as soft tissue metastasis, long, uh, the non-lung metastasis, tumor more than 3 cm and heavily pre-treated patients with systemic therapy were found to be associated with worse overall survival. The risk of radiation induced liver injury is there and uh, this Basically, the risk is 5% after 32 gray delivery to the whole liver at the rate of 2 gray per fraction. In this, there is central sinusoidal congestion with adjacent hepatic atrophy and it occurs from a few weeks to 4 months after irradiation. These are the various doses of the radiotherapy which, are, which have to be given according to the site of the metastasis. Coming to the studies in this regard, Franzis et al. in 2019 reviewed outcomes of 437 oligometastasis treated in 270 colorectal uh, in uh, 270 colorectal cancer patients they found metastasis in 48.5% patients in lung 36% involvement of of liver 12.4% lymph node and rest being 2.7% local control rates of 95% were seen at 1 year and 73% at 5 year overall risk overall survival rate was also uh, was also found to be good as in 88% and 37% uh, at 1 in 5 year interval. Cabiela J. et al. in 2018 did a systematic review to look into treatment of colorectal cancer, liver and lung oligometastasis with stereotactive ablative body radio radiotherapy and uh, they found that liver control rate was around 50 to 100 percent at one year and 32 32 to 91 percent at two years the lung control rates were 60 to 92 percent and 53 to 92 percent at one and two year respectively the rate of grade three or more toxicity was found to be 2 to 3 2.3 percent in liver and 0.7 percent in case of lungs coming to brachytherapy ct guided brachytherapy is a safe and effective uh, modality in non-operable colorectal liver metastasis. Now, the brachytherapy catheters are inserted into liver metastasis under fluoroscopic CT guidance. It enables delivery of high dose, uh, high dose rate interstitial radiation and has the benefit over stereotactic ablative radiotherapy being independent of patient and organ motion. Lesions over 5 cm in size and those at risk, uh, those close to at-risk structures could not, that could not be treated with RFA prior could be addressed. Uh, though no local recurrence was found at 12.2 months uh, time when the minimum dose delivered to the polo, uh, to the liver metastasis exceeded 24 gray. These were the various modalities which have been which can be used in oligometastatic colorectal cancer. To conclude, oligometastatic disease in liver or lung should be considered for surgical resection if they are amenable to R0 resection. Six months of perioperative systemic therapy should be administered. Addition of targeted therapy is indicated in conversion therapies and unreceptible metastatic colorectal cancer. Systemic therapy options for patients with progressive disease depend on the choice of initial therapy and biomarker status of the tumor. The choice of treatment strategy should be made by a multidisciplinary team considering tumor 
as well as patient factors along with the technique uh, along with the technique in play Nisha, how will you select your patient for preoperative or new adjuvant therapy in a resectable colorectal meds in the case of resectable colorectal meds as i mentioned ma'am there are only few contraindications which we have to take into account we need to assess the patient for uh, we need to see the volume of resection which we have to do and hence the the remnant flr has to be known before this we have to screen the patient at that point of time with an mri liver to find out the localization and uh, uh, we'll be using the hepatocyte specific agents ma'am as i said in my presentation so hepatocyte after... specific agents are not required in all cases it's good if you have it but it's not yes, mandatory ma no ma'am it's not mandatory my question is very clear so you have a patient who is very fit you have staged the patient there is no extra hepatic disease there are let's say only two lesions okay yes, in the liver yes, which is accessible yes so how will you decide whether you will give this patient some new adjuvant treatment or take him or her for upfront resection that's my question ma'am if the patient is having a if we don't if the patient is having a very good prognosis and if it is upfront resectable then we can no. take up the patient no. for simultaneous you tell me treatment. how will you decide that the prognosis that is what is important you have to stratify your resectable colorectal meds into low risk and high risk group yes now what helps you decide this ma'am uh, the number of lesion as i said ma'am by formula you have those scoring can... systems that you discussed yes ma'am yes ma'am are you forgetting them they are very important yes ma'am ma'am since the size of the uh, since as you said ma'am there are only two lesions so it is uh, it doesn't fall into a high risk group and then since it is present at the time of uh, the it is present at the time of the disease so there is uh, it is a synchronous disease ma'am basically and uh, the size of the primary tumor and lymph nodal positivity of the primary also helps us in assessing whether it is a high risk patient or not if otherwise we don't expect a high risk primary with uh, higher t stage or n stage that means it may again fall into a low risk the answer would be if your scoring shows two or less a low risk low risk group so this patient and you have the adequate expertise and all inflow outflow whatever the liver parameters are also within uh, you know healthy state you can go ahead and do a primary resection before the adjuvant chemotherapy or a new adjuvant yes. and all those who fall within the resectable group but they carry high risk features where high the risk. scoring systems are scoring scores are rather high these patients will benefit with your new adjuvant perioperative therapy perioperative sir uh, i would like to add uh, another way of local ablation which are being practiced uh, it is called the ethanol therapy uh, if uh, uh, like a high uh, concentrated ethanol is being injected in that uh, liver metastasis i don't think it's uh, any longer used manek yes ma'am uh, but it's it's a one of the technique that was used Before, previously it used to be oh yes ma'am and and ma'am uh, in the norway uh, group they have tried uh, liver uh, transplantation in uh, some cases of colorectal liver meds which has shown a very good response yeah so the role of transplant is a totally different uh, you know subject it's yes. definitely coming up in colorectal meds that cannot be sectioned so nisha tell us why some uh, lesions uh, you know these are oligometastatic and some are very aggressive what's the theory behind it how do you understand this i mean what is this oligometastatic state why does it happen if you go into the biology of the disease why is it so like colorectal metastases uh, they fall in this oligo group not so much breast cancer so what is the biology behind this uh, as per uh, the studies they are saying ki, uh, the liver metastasis can be considered as a regional spread because uh, from colon uh, uh, the tumor <laughs> will spread in liver only due to by the portal circulation so uh, when the tumor is spreading to liver one can consider it as a non metastatic rather than a regional spread from the primary tumor and so uh, it, uh, they are shown to be having better response when they are removed along with the tumor not so much uh, based on the lung and nodal as well as peritoneal disease but more specifically for liver disease if it is resected 
and if it is resectable and it is uh, taken out then the os is much better in comparison to liver meds due to other uh, malignancies so basically you have two cancer hypotheses i'm sure all of us know one is the halstead theory that they believe that uh, all cancers are local to start with and then there was a fisher's hypothesis which says that all cancers are systemic in nature now there is another theory which is called a spectrum theory so it's not like you know it, both are one end of the spectrum so there in between is like you know frets of a guitar there is there are varying spectrum and in this spectrum what happens is cancer cells undergo various kinds of mutation there is clonal evolution so these uh, oligometastatic uh, clones they do not have that much of uh, aggressiveness in them so they tend to you know slip from uh, primary and sleep in the liver for a while and then perhaps later on uh, get more aggressive so these are the clones which we pick up and resect good evening sir uh, sir i just wanted to ask recently in the news uh, regarding the immunotherapy where in mskcc they reported a complete response in 18 patients of uh, colorectal disease with uh, dostarlimumab like that uh, do we have any role of uh, immunotherapy in this kind of uh, oligometastatic colorectal renal metastasis okay it was 12 cases not 18, 18. okay sir but 12 not 18 and what was the characteristic of those 12 patients but they were locally advanced uh, colorectal disease sir no, like no no, no they were operable look stage 2 and 3 what else what was the okay. msi status all were unstable patient yeah, MSI, de MSI. deficient mmr uh, deficient uh, msi high patients msi high mmr are deficient yes, sir, so yes, that sir. is the, that is the subgroup that has responded Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in the in those particular group, like uh, in this uh, liver metastasis patient, also do they actually can they respond well in the in this particular group? This yes, this has only twelve months uh, follow up. Yes, sir. So I think it is too early, and uh, it is not a comparable randomized trial. It's highly yes. selective twelve patients being treated. Because yes. if you if you look at the Uh, earlier trials, like Gator yes, trial, the response rate was only forty percent. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen, but it is definitely promising results. Okay. It suggests that in MSI high, MMR unstable patients, this yes. can be one of the drug of choice. and if you read the article in the new england journal of medicine the colonoscopy features that they have shown are remarkable i mean the mucosa looks so normal that <laughs> there wasn't any disease per se yeah and taken up and the other thing you must know that there was no surgery here so it was only yes. biopsies uh, taken during the treatment yes ma'am yes, ma yeah anyway uh, so it's not a we don't know if it was a pcr per se but nevertheless response is very amazing <laughs> Sponsors. And the cost is also amazing. Six months treatment will cost about one crore. Oh God! Yeah, it's eight lakh rupees per dose. Three weekly for six months. Actually, I was reading it today only because Rudra had posted something on Facebook, and then Negi and all of we were all discussing the same. So the interesting thing why they published this small set subset of patients was. that they had made a null hypothesis in which they stated that only 25% will have a good response but here when they had a response close to 100% they thought it is worthwhile to publish it because their null hypothesis got rejected even before the complete enrollment of 30 patients was done so that was the basis of uh, publishing this basically it is to sell the drug oh yes definitely hum log ka hota hai if it was an indian study i'm sure we would have been rejected <laughs> would have been rejected and they would not have believed us oh yes and uh, see the problem with this is like if you look at the gator trial the gator trial has a response rate of 40% mm -hmm. and the complete pathological response rate was 9% so the same drug in one trial mm. uh, having 40% response rate in the other having 100% response rate it's a little uh, difficult to believe the sample size is so small it's quite possible that the next 12 patient that they recruit mm. all 12 of them may not respond right so it is it, it's uh, probability
but yes nobody has uh, shown a 100% response rate in any of the anti cancer drug till date so that's an achievement and without any standard therapy that's another thing yes yes so that is that is uh, something that is an achievement and definitely we should look forward to hopefully yeah. hopefully if it works then it's good for the patients uh, regarding uh, the role of uh, circulating tumor cell and liquid uh, biopsy how it is helping to uh, predict uh, which patients are going to have uh, early metastasis and uh, uh, to start and any role of uh, prophylactic uh, starting treatment whether she can uh, put light on those uh, part of that region which are upcoming uptrend uh, um, therapies that are coming up uh, a call regarding uh, circulating tumor cell again in this regard so there are studies they haven't yet given any definitive results as of now being in use but then we can look for expression of i read sir about uh, mir rna some 345 i guess sir i'm forget i beg your pardon sir i don't remember the exact uh, molecule but expression of that if it was found to be higher was associated with a poorer response as compared to those having a lesser response having a lesser expression of that rna so the expression of that rna was if present was found to be associated with poor uh, what should i say sir poor response to targeted therapies and uh, definitely sir it has got some role but they are upcoming sir there are no clear cut guidelines definitely the role of micro rna is very important there are uh, several of them they have been identified as a marker of poor rna so they definitely what they do is they work at cellular level enhancing the motility of the cell and its metastatic capacity similarly there are few rnas which actually help uh, you know in preventing the cell migration and there is a study i don't remember off hand but there was a study in which they assessed i mean like they are searching every day for a new risk scoring systems no so in one of them they said that if there are too many circulating tumor cells rather they were looking for a ct dna and that was a harbinger of poor prognosis and like breast cancer we still do not have any genomic profiling or like oncotype dx or something like that for selecting uh, the best clone the best patient which might benefit from local regional treatment so it's an area of ongoing research and the other thing of all the other treatments that uh, nisha you discussed i think besides that last trial what was in which there was a head to head comparison between ablation and resection there are no head to head comparison between the other modalities so resection remains the mainstay of treatment collision trial something like that you said no of all the modalities of treatment you discussed yes, yes is there any head to head comparison with surgery ma'am uh, there is a trial which is recruiting patients as of now which is the collision trial yeah which is uh, in that's which the is only trial i mean otherwise yes, there haven't been any studies no ma'am no ma'am no head to head comparison and one last thing i wanted to say conversion therapy is for an unresectable tumor if you am conversion have already resectable yes ma'am yes. it's for potentially resectable or unresectable basically Both. Um, better modality. The the actual term would be for a borderline resectable, not exactly an unresectable. Yeah. But the treatment of intent is uh, the complete systemic therapy along with targeted therapy. If at all it falls in that. Yeah. 